our first comedian tonight is from Denver. He's a proposal manager and he's a writer. Please welcome to the stage, Gary Mason. I'm not bothering you. I, uh, <laughs> I have this. I, I have this real fear of irritating people, so I'm always trying to be nice. And uh, you know, I've found it's really, really exhausting. <laughs> so I've I've decided I I need a I need a new shortcoming. Like Tourette's. <laughs> All that cussing. <laughs> yeah. I think I find that really invigorating. <sighs> uh, when I'm self conscious, I'm, I'm not really me. I'm the uh, pretend me, and the uh, pretend me sucks. <laughs> It's, it's like a copy of a copy. Um, not doing... So you can imagine, uh, the pretend me doesn't wow my dates. Yeah. I'm sort of bland, like a cheese stick or a Toyota Corolla. You know? <laughs> now, of course, that's, that's where the Tourette's would come in handy. That would really help. Um, I'm uh, 57 and I've never been married. And yeah, thanks. Um, and I, I feel like I've really missed out on, you know, part of the maturation process, you know, you're supposed to go through. Um, we'll be out on a date, and we're sharing our lives, and I'll say, well, I biked all the way across Tibet. And she'll say, well, I gave birth three times. <laughs> <laughs> Raised them and sent them off to college. I'm like, oh, okay. <sighs> and I hate being set up on dates. You know, I really hate that. It's always a couple. And the wife says, Oh, Gary should meet Linda. They'd be really great together. Right, honey? And, you know, I look at the husband and I can see this look. <laughs> and, and I know he's going to lie. You know, I just know it. Oh, I... Um, and I hate it when they think you just need one thing in common to be compatible. <laughs> once, once on a blind date, I learn that this woman saw her fiancé get run over by a truck and die. Yeah, I know. Just... <laughs> Just one week before our date. I'm sorry, it was one month. It was actually one month. So I'm like, oh. I go back to my friend and I say, what the hell were you thinking? And, and, and she's like, well, you're both so serious. I was like, God. I worry a lot. You know, I do. I worry gets in the way of everything. You know, it's it's like having a cat beneath your feet all day. You know, <laughs> Just like, get out of here. I uh, I worry about making my mark in life. 
And I had a friend once say, don't worry about it. You're a late bloomer. <laughs> I feel like one day you're going to turn the corner and when you do, you're just going to take off. That was decades ago. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, now, I now have a, you know, make a good living. I recently bought my first house. Thanks. And I'm ready to get out there and take a nap. <laughs> So, that's the direction I'm going in. <sighs> I also repress my feelings, you know, which is a lot like constipation. <laughs> if you don't get it out, you feel like shit. <laughs> also, you, you look constipated. <laughs> oh. I live alone, I work from home, I'm lonely, I'm lonely. So I watch movies with my dad, is that weird? He died 29 years ago. I, I repeat some of the dialogue because he's hard of hearing, you know? Oh. <laughs> I, I talk to myself a lot and I've gotten really good at it. You know, I, I used to mumble and now I sound professorial. I'll even share new words with myself. Like, Schadenfreude. Wow, I'm impressed. That's really impressive. Oh, I do Airbnb. You know, it's nice. I have people around the house. So, except for the occasional bad guests. One was a total nightmare. And I should have given him a bad review, but I didn't. I was nervous. He knows where I live. <laughs> Since then, I've, I've learned how to write the reviews very carefully. Frank was such a great guest. I really appreciate the pyramid of Coors cans he left on the nightstand. And the bong was a nice touch. Yeah. yeah. Anybody out there have a nice dad, have a great dad? Huh? You have a great dad? Mine was better. Uh, when I was a kid, he'd hold me up and he'd say, yes, you are. You're my son. And uh, he'd bear hug me and slap me on the back with these big old ham chop hands. And from a distance, it looked like child abuse. But <laughs> he had three sons. First had Richard and then he had me and last was my little brother Tommy but he he would always get stuck on the previous kid's name so I was Richard uh, Gary and my brother Tommy was Richard uh, Gary uh, god damn it what's your name get over here <laughs> I uh, I always knew that you know if something happened to me and I just disappeared you know, he would never stop looking for me, ever. 
10 years, I'd be on a desert island, and then I'd hear, Richard, uh, <laughs> Gary, <laughs> you've been great. Thank you. <laughs> Give a warm applause for everyone else coming. Gary Mason!